so my job is to talk about uh, internal fixation of phalanges today uh, i think it's a very broad uh, spectrum of injuries and i think all of us can spend hours together talking about different injuries but for the purpose of this talk and for the sake of brevity we'll talk about closed displaced fractures mainly of proximal phalanx but the similar logic does apply to middle phalanx although the distal phalanx is a different beast altogether so as we are all uh, familiar in orthopedics the first decision we have to make is whether we are going to do an open or closed reduction and both have their pros and cons and then we have to decide whether we want to do an internal or external fixation now for the sake of this discussion what i mean by external fixation which essentially is usually kys is the kind of fixation which doesn't allow you to mobilize early and the internal fixation is the kind of fixation which gives enough stability so that you can start moving the finger maybe in at least a week's time or so so all of the permutations combinations are possible for example a close reduction external fixation when feasible or fixation with kys would probably be the best modality of treatment if you are not opening you are definitely reducing the risk of stiffness hope as long as you keep the hand in functional position the circumstances may not always allow that so you will you will be sometimes forced to do an open reduction internal fixation but here then the priority is to start mobilizing early to get a good result this is the match made in heaven so if you have a modality which gives you close reduction but a good enough fixation which you can start moving early as that would be the best case scenario and sometimes the circumstances force for the worst case scenario so you might be forced to do an open reduction and external fixation and this is the least preferred version because then get that gives a disadvantage of both the modalities so you have caused or you have induced stiffness by dissection but you can't mobilize early to counter that stiffness and the circumstances decide which of these decisions do we make the other mitigating factors could be what type of fracture we are dealing with what is the pattern of fracture with whether it is a closed or open or an oblique or transverse fracture the surgeon factors the cost and finally the infrastructure so we'll look at some cases so for example in this case it's an base fracture which started out as a base fracture but it has gone on to the uh, shaft of the phalanx and this is the uh, an example of what we i call as the gold standard so we have done a close reduction and we uh, start extra articularly from the basis of the proximal phalanx Uh, the thing i would like to mention is uh, when if you want intend to do fra common fr uh, fixation of fractures in the hand we should have very small k wires on table trying to do this kind of fixation with 1.2 or bigger size wire is very tough job you have only one shot if you do 1.2 if that doesn't work then you have created a big hole which will not allow you any purchase so you should have 0.8 and 1 mm k wires on hand and we immobilize the patient and can hope for a good result so this is the gold standard against which all other treatment modalities can be uh, measured upon although the x-ray does look decent but passing these wires in the shaft is very difficult sometimes so if you have a transverse shaft fracture the wire can simply keep on exiting through the fracture site so we all stand on the shoulder of the shoulders of the giant so this is a technique which is dis if not described at least taught to us by dr patankar i'm sure many of you know but i think it's a great technique so it gives you the advantage of close reduction and a very stable fixation where you can make a small nick just like the bouquet technique dr da altaf showed you and these are 0.8 k wires so there is no point attempting to do this with a bigger size k wires but this is given the advantage of close reduction and a reasonably stable fixation for early mobilization unfortunately for me i couldn't get the long term follow up of this patient despite my best efforts but this is a very low cost technique where you just cut the wires flush can you fix that please yeah so you need a very good cutter to execute this if the wires are protruding out then they irritate the extensor tendon now this is a bit of a controversy but there are papers which suggest that we can do something close to intramedullary nailing for phalanx and metacarpal fractures as has been shown by dr altaf sir uh in metacarpal actually it makes most sense because the entry point is where the proximal phalanx doesn't articulate but in phalanges actually you have to go through bang the articular surface and that is why there is a big critique on this technique 
and few years time either this will become our worst source of the technique or we will all be condemning it but we will have to give it time so uh, till this point we have only short term results but definite advantage is we can start mobilizing them so this is intraoperative imaging and it gives very good stability advantages of close reduction the only issue which is still the jury is out on is does it cause long term arthrosis or not we will know in few years uh, these are the kind of fractures where you have to be ready to open so long oblique fractures or spiral oblique fractures are the ones which are least amenable to close reduction and fixation and they are the ones which are very prone for mal rotation so if you see the little finger is out of sync compared to the other fingers as has been told by dr yogesh that the little finger should also be pointing towards the scaphoid tuberosity which it is not now in this case i was prepared with all my instruments ready for open reduction and fixation but you might be lucky once in a while and achieve a close reduction but i wouldn't bank on this if you see an x ray like this you have to be ready with open reduction luckily for me i could get a close reduction with a i'll spend maybe 10 minutes to do a close reduction if we it came so we fixed it with wires and got a good result but I, again oblique fractures close reduction is very less likely to be successful and this is an example of what i mean so this is an oblique completely displaced fracture and these are the fractures which definitely you should be prepared to open if you see the imaging uh, the clinical image the ring finger is scissoring over the little finger and once you decide to open this is where the technical details matter a lot so we have to be careful to go dissection layer by layer what you see here is the periosteum which is divided separately as a sheath and it is a futile attempt to try and reduce this with towel clips so you should have a specialized instruments which are available easily these days to hold the reduction well which allow you enough stability to pass in the lax screws and ideally the fracture line should disappear if, if that doesn't happen we are always risking mal rotation and if you follow a good technique one should be able to close back the periosteum and these are the patients i want them to follow up with me uh, very frequently so if i have done a close reduction and a <coughs> immobilization in a slab or a cast i don't need to see them very frequently i can see them two times in a month and then it is time to mobilize them but if i have done an open reduction and fixation i want to see that patient weekly so i get a, keep a track of how he is mobilizing his finger is he doing adequate physio or not so here is where the patient's dedication comes into play sometimes the fracture configuration forces you to go for even heavier implants for example you see there is a butterfly fragment there and once i was done with the interfragmentary screws i was worried about passing two screws from this butterfly into either pieces because it could have caused a, a shattering of the butterfly fragment so in such cases you will be forced to use uh plates fortunately few years back this was, assembly was not available in pune nowadays we have it since last maybe 3 or 4 years but these are the patients i am worried about most and i want to see them very frequently and i have to admire this guy because i asked him to send me clinical videos and he has beautifully given his journey through uh, the rehabilitation process this is a video made by him i should actually hire him to make videos for me and the how he mobilizes the finger this is the compression bandage that we use using hot fermentation to move the fingers and that is the final result at around 7 months and to get results like this i think the biggest credit should go to the patient yes the surgeon has to do it the, his job but physio has to play a bigger role and a dedicated patient can make us look good thank you for your attention